was determined to get him, and I was really scary. New at 11, a Tacoma family sharing terrifying moments after they say a six-year-old boy was nearly kidnapped by a woman armed with a machete and an axe. The family took a trip to Portland where they say the woman threatened them and used racial slurs. Tacoma's Cole Miller is live with their story tonight. Cole? It's a chilling story, Mary Preston. That boy's mother says she is still traumatized by all of this. They had gone out to grab a quick bite for lunch, and they quickly noticed that woman was standing behind them and acting strange, claiming their boy belonged to her, and then she threatened to kill them. On the hunt for a slice of pizza in downtown Portland this past weekend, a Tacoma family soon found themselves in a frightening position. A woman they had never met before eyeing their um, six-year-old son. I don't know what it was. She just kept staring at him. And it only got worse from there. As they walked away, Alex Perez says that woman followed them across the street, demanding they turn the boy over, even reaching for him, eventually pulling out a machete. Police sharing this photo of that weapon and another blade on social media. He was definitely very scared. I mean, he was couldn't stop crying. Um, he was shaking, his heart was beating really fast. The 37-year-old was arrested after Perez called police, and she's facing a number of charges, including bias crime. The family says she targeted their race with her words. When she started yelling racial slurs, saying, yeah, run, and word run, she's like, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, give me my son back. Now behind bars, the family hopes she's able to get the help that she needs. Yeah, good morning. Some council members believe that the only way to keep that encampment from coming back is to take the park away from the city. Today, judges and King County Council members will meet to find a way to keep the trouble at City Hall Park in downtown Seattle from coming back. 70 people were recently relocated from the park. Before that, there was piles of trash, violence, even a murder. Right after everybody left, they steam cleaned and instantly you could smell the difference. At the meeting today, judges and council members will talk about the possibility of the county taking ownership of the park from the city. And that's not all. If I'm prepared to personally consider a lawsuit against the city for not implementing the 1991 collaboration that was signed between the city of Seattle in King County on providing more security in that area. A city park spokesperson told us in the future, any tents at City Hall Park will be immediately removed as obstructions. Some people who have spent time near the park are skeptical of the city's assurances. Going back to the status quo is not an acceptable uh, return to business as usual. Now, there's no word yet if any city leaders would be open to the idea of letting go of that park in a land swap with the county. Turning now to the coronavirus outbreak. The state. All right, this is serious business. They say, though, that the vast majority of people like here at the Fred Meyer are complying with the mask mandate, but they say that the tip line is very busy with people complaining about uh, non-compliance. Well, this day two of the governor's new indoor mask mandate for public spaces, we're seeing most people masking up. I don't have any problem with it. You know, um, it's just not that big a deal. But the State Department of Labor and Industries says the complaints into the tip line at coronavirus.wa.gov have now reached 186. But so far, it looks like folks are taking it seriously. That's an uptick from what we saw over the course of the summer uh, and late spring in terms of the number of complaints we were getting on an average basis. The state says they don't yet have the breakdown of places where violations are occurring, whether it's stores or businesses or restaurants, just that people are reporting it. I think that if they're not following the mandate, then they probably should be reported. But several people posting to our Como Facebook page don't agree. Susan wrote, nothing better to do than report people. I'm not telling what store I went to today that was all maskless. Pavel wrote, surprised that it's not more. People are tired of it and won't be complying. Such as this shopper who didn't want to give us his name and says he doesn't believe in masks. So you're not wearing a mask? Um, I never have. <laughs> so, they, so there's a mandate for them to make you wear a mask inside. Right, right. Well, you know what? When they start making me wear it, I probably won't go in just because I'm, I'm at the end of my rope, so to speak. But the state says businesses are expected to enforce the mandate or face loss of license or fines, which with previous mandates totaled $8 million, 
but most of it's been tied up in the courts. We want to make sure they're up to speed, that they know all the requirements that they that they are facing uh, and what the expectations are. We want to help them come into compliance. And then if there are repeated issues or are continued problems, that's where the enforcement side would come in. Hi, everybody. Thanks for checking out our YouTube page. I'm meteorologist Shannon O'Donnell from the Como Weather Team. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for additional news from the Seattle area and Western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't ever miss our YouTube updates.